All right, so here is the question. If I'm taking out the slack while using tunneling method, where I loosen my brake hand to keep sliding it up the rope, what would happen if the climber would take a fall at the moment I'm bringing my brake hand up? Would I react in time and grab on the rope to catch the fall? Or imagine a distracted beginner using this method. How sketchy is that? Now, an interesting fact is that in some countries, this tunneling method is a big no-no, while in other countries, it's actually the way you learn to be lame. So to find out how risky, or maybe not risky, this method is, I needed to push it to failure. It's like if you wanna know how safe the carabiner is, you break it. To maximize the chance of failure, we used a skinny 9.0 rope, combined with a massive whipper, and I tried to time my brig hand moving up as I saw the climber falling down. And I quickly realized two things. First, that it's really hard to precisely time my hand going up as I see the climber is falling, because the things happen really fast. And also, if I see the climber is falling, it's very easy for me to grab on the rope and the chance of failure is pretty much zero. So to avoid me fighting my instincts, I decided to not look into the climber. So I will be not looking, I will be just moving the hand. Okay. Sorry for the hard catch. That's okay, that's okay. <laughs> So we did a multiple of these falls and I can say that it still was hard to make it fail because I could clearly see the rope dropping down in front of me during the fall, kind of giving me a heads up that the fall is coming and intuitively I was already prepared to grab on the rope. So I kind of tried to resist grabbing on the rope and just keep moving my hand up and down, up and down until the very, very last moment but still no fail. Then we came up with the idea to imitate a clip drop where my climber was tugging on the rope and taking a fall so I wouldn't be sure when the fall is happening. However, it still was pretty easy to catch the fall because I could still distinguish when the rope is being wiggled and when the actual fall is happening. So I decided to do something that I wouldn't recommend doing and loosen up my brake hand grip to make it a bigger tunnel as I'm tunneling up. And this time my hand was moving up in a perfect moment when the fall happened and my hand was pulled up quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, this time I felt that my hand was going up when the fall happened and I felt a little bit of slippage from my hand. So a little bit more sketchy this time, but still in control. There is no way I would drop you here. No. Because it's like, it slips a bit and then it slows down like Yeah, so it gets easier and easier. Yeah, it gets easier and easier. Yeah. Okay, so that was my experience. And what was more interesting is to change me to somebody less experienced in belaying with tubes. How long have you been climbing? Uh, three, no, yeah, two years and a half. Ah, so you've been climbing for two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of six most motivated. <laughs> All right, so we started with a small normal fall where she was looking into the climber. <laughs> and as there was no problems here, we moved on to our experiment. We started with medium-sized fall and the catch was okay. However, if we look into slow motion, you can notice the rope slipping through her hand three times until she finally manages to establish a full control. Es que como sorprende. ¿Qué tal? Sorprende. Wow. And here is another one, and the same story, real life catch looks okay. <laughs> However, slow motion shows rope slipping through her hand, which is a little bit worrisome, but no fail so far. My face is gonna be... How was that? How was that? <laughs> so since that was good, we increased the size of the fall. <laughs> 
<laughs> so despite the fall being bigger, the catch looked very similar to previous falls and the rope slippage looked also very similar. It could have simply been the result of her getting used to these catches. You notice the... Um, the rope going down. Yeah, you yeah, see yeah. The rope going so down. you know it's coming, but yeah. when it's coming it's very... <laughs> and now, because we do a lot of times, I, I can know more when it's coming. So it was time for a clip drop or a rope wiggle and fall. <laughs> this time the catch had a little bit of panic and again a little bit of rope slipping through her hand. However, she still did a good job and managed to catch the fall. It was tricky, like, yeah. I don't know. But well done, <laughs> you're holding the rope. Yeah. <laughs> So we did multiple more of these falls and the worst of them was this one. <laughs> Where the rope was slipping so much that entire backup slipped through until the hand reached the knot. So chances are it could have slipped even more. Yeah, this is, was more difficult. So was the rope sliding through your hand or no? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. So <laughs> that was the fall. Good. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Good. Nice to know that the stopper knot was there. <laughs> Good day. We rolling? Rolling. Have you played with this thing? Uh, no. No? Never? Something similar, but not a tubic. What's the similar thing you played with? Um, a tubic, which was... Well, this is a tubic. Uh, yeah. That, so you played with the tubic? Um, yes. Once or twice. Once or twice? Yeah. So he is going to be going out that way. And I'm the B layer, so I'm here. The only thing is, I don't know which side to be using. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that is so terrifying. <laughs> okay, I have it like this. <laughs> did you felt the rope slipping through your hand or no? I feel like I did. So it seems that she did a great job at grabbing on the rope in time and the rope was not slipping through her hand however her hand was pulled up towards belaying device a lot and that is worrisome it may have been but slipping. you still have all the backup in front of you yes. so i do but yeah i think i caught it like if it was slipping maybe the slightest bit and i just grabbed it like that uh -huh. so yeah okay want to try again sure sure Tell I'm much more prepared now for this. Inevitably, it didn't slip. Okay. <laughs> didn't slip through my hand. I caught it. That's the thing. You hear it. Yeah. You hear it sliding through here, and your hand, or well, my hand, grips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> already a smile. Um, You're already having fun. Yeah, it is fun. But it's like towards the wall and I'm like, whoa. Yeah, the, the fall is big. But yeah, it is fun. I don't know, I guess because I don't use these usually, I feel a bit more confident right now going through this experience and knowing that yes, I can react in time. Now, before we go to even sketchier experiments, I wanted to say a special thank you to Mammut for supporting this video. And also, I will be visiting their headquarters or their lab and be testing some interesting stuff with climbing ropes. So if you have any questions about climbing ropes, write down them to the comments and I will pass those questions to the experts. And now back to our experiment. And when he falls, can I take it? Yeah, when he falls, do whatever you would do.
What happened? Uh, I don't even know very well, but I tried to grab, but my hand slid up, hit on the device, and then I tried to still grab it, but it was too fast, it was already on the knot. And so we had a fail, which would be catastrophic in real life scenario. However, before the war happens in my comments, maybe you want to consider hearing my takeaways. So first of all, we pushed this experiment really far, way more far than I expected that it's gonna be needed. Because normally in real life, if you would see the climber starting to fall, you would grab on the rope way before the impact would happen. Even if you're a very slow person, because the time it takes from the moment the climber starts falling to the impact, is between half a second to maybe even a full second on a bigger falls. Now for those cases where you cannot see the climber, experience plays a big role. And here are a couple of tips how to make this safer. So first of all, don't make it a big tunnel. Actually, it should be as small as possible and you should feel the contact of the rope on all sides of your palm when you're sliding the hand up. Also, if you just took a lot of slack out, tunneling method is really not comfortable and you would have to open your hand way more to do the tunneling. However, if you take small amounts of slack, now you barely need to open the hand and this is way more easy. Also, if you're in doubt or you're a beginner, as I already mentioned in my belay devices video, using the pull break under slide method, it's a really great way to learn the feeling of sliding the hand up. And once you do this many, many times, maybe at some point not bringing the left hand down and simply just sliding the break hand up is gonna be already very natural for you. So if in doubt, use any other method to make it safer. Another important thing with tubes is that they grab harder if you bring your brake hand closer to yourself because that tilts the device and creates extra friction. So if the fall happens, you want to bring your hand close to yourself and push it down. This is very strong position. In other words, if you're caught in this position, do not try to fight this pull of the rope in the belaying device. Instead, bend your bicep and push it down. So you want to go this way. Now where tunneling method really shines is in combination with assisted belaying devices. It basically allows me to do less hand movements as I'm belaying and give small amounts of slack, take small amount of slack so it's way more comfortable and precise. In contrast to doing something like this and then if mid here I need to give now the slack, so to close, I'm neither encouraging nor discouraging the usage of this belaying method. I simply wanted to share with you my findings and you can decide what's best for you. And if you cannot decide what's best for you, maybe it means that you need somebody experienced guiding you. And also don't forget that you just watched a YouTube video. I'm not a team of experts. I don't know every single thing. And uh, yeah, take everything you've seen with the grain of salt and be kind in comment section because I read all the comments and you guys fight a lot there.